Ah. Hey, it's me, uh, Onion Creature, and today is my first film review on this YouTube channel. Yes, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Film. Um, I just saw that on a theater screen, and uh, uh, and now I've come home, and boy, oh boy, do I have thoughts. So uh, let's let's get into that. This is a review of a video game film. Let's just do a little bit of backstory before we get into it. Uh, when this was announced, I was, uh, confused. It's a strange idea, a collaboration between, uh, Illumination and Nintendo. Uh, Illumination is not known for their quality, so I was concerned, uh, and, you know, up until this point, it's really been up in the other whether this is going to be a success or not. Uh, you know whether it's from the Nintendo side with them being overprotective of the brand or not being protective enough with it veering off into strange directions or Illumination just messing it up with their, you know, they're known for making films cheaply and efficiently and to appeal to the widest demographic possible. And so because of that, uh, you know, really was a bit of a mystery how this was going to turn out. And, you know, you can watch as many trailers and read as many reviews as you want, but uh, this is one where definitely you kind of have to see it to see to make up your mind. Um, which is definitely the case for me because, you know, I was going back on back and forth before seeing this in terms of my expectations, where they should be. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, positive feedback from one side, extremely negative from, from the other side. So I, I don't know what to think, and I go into this movie open mind. Uh, I go into this movie open-minded, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, what happened. This movie is equivalent of a bus of sound and color hitting you in the face full force for 90 minutes. It's ridiculous. It's, um, it's kind of unlike any other film I've ever seen, which is not necessarily a good or bad thing, but it is... It is an extremely unique experience, and for that, I would say it's a success in that it's not a run-of-the-mill illumination animation picture, uh, or I, I can't really directly compare it to any other animated movie I've seen. It really is in its own category of thing, uh, and whether or not that works for you or it doesn't is uh, pretty pretty damn subjective, I'll bet. I have to say I enjoyed it. Um, I, I, I can't, I couldn't really stop analyzing it as I was watching it, so like, during basically every single choice they made, every like musical key, every uh, visual alteration or reference, I was kind of in a hyper-analyst mode that was just where my brain was. It's kind of difficult to see the, the thought process behind all of it at times. It's such a strange experience, it really is. Overall though, it is, it's fun. I would say fun would be a word. Comedy in it is effective. The tone was surprisingly serious uh, for much of it, which I was not anticipating, especially given Illumination's other films, um, which really, really feel much lighter than this, which is strange. I was not expecting it. Yeah, after these broader strokes, I will go into spoilers, because like, that's kind of a whole another story of, of the specific references and ha my thoughts on them. Are, yeah, that, that's a pretty big part of the film for me. As an overall thing, visual experience that you sit in a theater and see, uh, success. Which is, I would say that's the big headline, is that they did pull it off. This is a film that will appeal to, I would say, a large demographic of people, uh, and I think it offers something that is not offered by other films, and for that it's certainly worth checking out. Past that though, there's a lot of detail to get into, because just the way that they adapted this simplistic video game series, you know, in, in terms of thematics and story and characters, Mario is famously simplistic, and the way they adapted that is very very strange, um, actually. It's, it was not really what I thought I would be, would be getting from, from this studio, even though they're in close collaboration with Nintendo. So yeah, that's the big thing. Uh, if it, 
I would say see it. You know, if you really hate animated films, I guess don't. But uh, otherwise, at least give it a shot because I, I think even if you hate it, you will get something out of this experience um, that is just not provided elsewhere. Okay, anyway, spoilers. Big spoiler warning tag here. Okay, the first thing that has stuck out to me majorly is... Uh, I would, I'll just do the characters, because Mario characters, extremely simplistic. Mario, he is the hero. Princess Peach is a princess. Bowser is the villain. Luigi is the uh, frightened little brother character. Um, that's your core cast. You kind of expect, going into a 90-minute a movie about characters like this that have existed for over 30 years, you expect them to be more fleshed out than they are, because they really... I would say all the characters have about 50% more depth than the game characters, rough estimate. Uh, which I just wasn't expecting. I was expecting... I don't know. I was expecting them to feel more like proper characters than they do in the game. And maybe the reason they didn't do that was because it would feel too different from the games, and that might have been a Nintendo call or a call from the writers, but the end result is that um, they're kind of cardboard cutouts at, at times throughout a lot of it. Yeah, it, it, it feels wrong, uh, and, and at some points it, it feels like sort of hollow. In a strange way, it does work at times, because you know what's happening, you know what the characters are about, because... It's just obvious whether you're being introduced to them in the film. It's very clear what the character is. And if you have prior knowledge, then you obviously know what they are. Uh, I would say some characters that have slightly added depth are perhaps Bowser and maybe Peach. It's actually very difficult to describe uh, on a first viewing um, to analyze these these representations of the characters. So that is one of the main criticisms that I've seen is that the plot and characters are thin and um, I wouldn't say that's invalid because it's just true. Um, it's kind of just inherent in the movie that what you see is what you get. Um, if you have any knowledge of what Mario is, you're gonna see that in the movie. And perhaps they needed to do that, but I don't know. That's just how it worked out, and it was it was strange to see, you know, an animated film with just such a lack of depth in its protagonists. Um, they just uh, they just go through the motions of the plot, and it works. It sounds possibly more harsh than I experienced it, but it was like it was just very weird. The vocal performances were actually pretty strong. Uh, I w I don't think any of the actors really stood out as particularly horrible. Um, it's pretty standard, you know, major feature film voice acting uh, for an animated movie. Um, Chris Pratt, fine. Charlie Day is Luigi, fine. Anya Taylor-Joy is Peach, fine. Jack Black is Bowser, fine. Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong, uh, slightly grating at times, but not really, not really. I don't think anyone was really find that distracting. The voice fits the character reasonably well enough. I don't think any of the performances really inspire really strong emotions any in any specific direction for me. Um, but they do, they're functional at the very least and uh, work within the story or what story there is because it really is, it's, it's, it is the basic Mario story but stretched out to 90 minutes with you know, just lots of different action set pieces and, you know, little little comedy bits. Um, there's some effective visual gags. I've seen this director's previous film, uh, or one of the directors worked on the, the Teen Titans Go movie, and I think that's basically the only other movies these directors have handled, or this one director. Um, and that movie I didn't love, but there were strong elements of it, specifically the meta comedy was in that was pretty funny. And in this, there's like, uh, it's just, it's playing to a totally different set of, it's to it's just totally different in tone from that, um, which was surprising. I really was expecting a more comedic tone. I suppose we'll move, I'll move on to the music. Uh, I, I liked it quite a lot. 
uh, especially, of course, hearing the familiar Mario tracks. That being said, um, I feel like they dampened some of them for their inclusion in the movie, and that was disappointing at times. Um, specifically, Rainbow Road. Like, they play the notes of Rainbow Road, um, but they're very brief, and they, I feel like they're overly crowded in the symphonic sound uh, in that sequence. And that's also that also applies to several other sequences where I feel it it's more just background noise than it is a really strong emotional music, which I think is a flaw. You can say that they don't want the music to stand out too much, but I think when it, when the music does stand out, that's the best parts of the score um, for me, of course, subjectively. But um, like hearing Captain Toad's theme was really fantastic. Um, specifically, yeah, just hearing some of the more obscure tracks that were included was, like, shocking at times. Um, specifically, Luigi's Mansion, you get some notes of that, and I was like, Jesus, that was baffling. Um, that's the word of the day for this film, is baffling. It really is just, um, it's a ridiculous experience. The end credits music is probably the strongest point. Uh, they do a medley of all the different themes of the movie. There are specific musical themes that were developed only for this film, I noticed. Um, there's one for Bowser and one for, I guess, Mario. Um, and those are fine, but it is strange because I feel like it's sort of like the Sonic movie where they have, uh, they developed specific music for that. It's a lot better than the Sonic movie because the whole score is littered with uh, different musical references to Mario games. But um, I don't know how much those new themes stand out, but it also could just be because they're new and I have not I'm not familiar with them, so they don't really have an emotional pull as much as the, uh, the familiar tracks do. But apart from that, there's the licensed music, you know, the, the pop music that they had to put in there. It's, it really just feels like they're ticking the box that this is an Illumination animated feature. It has to have pop music in there. And uh, I'd say a fair amount of the time, it just, just doesn't really fit. It, I don't know, it was never a deal breaker because it just it's just expected. Um, and none of the song tracks are obnoxious songs. It's more that they're just extremely overused. Some of them are just in every movie. Um, holding out for a hero in the training montage is just, it's so obvious that it's just boring. Um, like it works in the scene, but it's, it's very uninspired. Um, you know, I was watching the Tetris film the, the other day and that also has that song in it like twice, so it's, it, it's just a song that's in every single movie, and it's like, must you, must you do this? So that's annoying, but fine. I don't care that much because it's just, it has to be there because that's the way that they make movies, is they put in pop music in animated movies that are made by Illumination. It's just a thing that happens. No matter what context or background it has to be there so great that's thank you guys you know some were better than others um but overall i did not like that um and it feels slightly deceptive on the marketing side that they did not give any indication that there would be licensed musics in in the movie and that might have been that they were advertising to a nintendo audience uh you know all the trailers were released through nintendo directs and the cast announcements were in nintendo directs so and perhaps they know that Nintendo fans don't really care about licensed music in their films, but it was like in none of the marketing were any of the songs, any of the licensed songs that were in the film included, which is very strange. Um, because they're in the movie, and it's, it's kind of annoying. Uh, not, not, not awful, but just a slight detractor for sure. Uh, other thing, the visual references, specifically in the New York, Brooklyn area, were really shocking and bizarre uh a whole like five seconds of kid icarus gameplay uh in a in a theater uh, full of people was just a really strange experience um i would never have predicted that um also like every single poster and like uh, shop sign is a reference to an obscure nintendo game there's a punch out pizzeria which is just has all the Punch-Out characters and photo frames. Mario's room has an NES and like F-Zero poster, an Ice Climber poster. All this stuff just um, in the background and sometimes at the forefront like with the Kid Icarus gameplay which was 
so bizarre. So, so strange. Um, cool, of course. Also, yeah, the beginning of the movie before you get into the Mushroom Kingdom was... I don't know. I think uh, I'm mixed on it because I really don't like a lot of the human character designs in this. Um, I think Mario's family, uh, Pauline and Mario themselves, they look fine, but some of the other minor human characters just look like generic Illumination characters, and I really don't like their character design philosophy on the whole, so I really, I thought those guys were kind of ugly, I, I just didn't like those other minor characters, and there's a dog character who they have a rivalry with, and I, I did not really appreciate that. Oh, other minor reference, there was like a Pikmin ice sculpture, or a glass sculpture in the apartment where they're fixing the plumbing, which was just, it just does a part where you point, you go, hey, I know what that is. Um, a fair amount of those, but yeah, mostly at the beginning, uh, there's a Charles Martinet cameo as a, a guy who looks like the original Jumpman and also as their father, which I think that works. Um, I liked their excuse for not having the traditional wahoo Mario voice. Um, it's, it's like a voice they use for their commercials. It's like, okay. So that was a reasonable explanation for why Mario sounds like a Brooklyn resident, uh, as does Luigi. Um, surprising amount of similarities to the original 93 Mario film with um, Mario and Luigi entering, you know, the city pipe system and then finding a portal to the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, and then Peach, or I guess in the original film it was Daisy, is like uh, the princess there, but she was raised there f as a child, which is this film's backstory as well so there's and then it ends with uh, Bowser coming to the real world and uh, having a showdown with Mario so it is surprisingly similar in structure like the overall structure yeah this review is extremely scattershot but that's just because like my brain is going a million miles a minute thinking about this this really really weird movie okay crackpot theory uh, there were no references to uh, some pretty major Nintendo franchise as far as I could tell I might have missed some, you know, the, the frames are pretty visually dense at times, so if I missed something, it's very possible. Um, I didn't see any Zelda references, I did not see any Metroid references, I did not see any Kirby references. Uh, I guess those would be the major ones that I just didn't see any hint of um, in any posters or anything or uh, shop signs. God, there was a Disc Coon shop sign? What? What? Who, who thought of that? Stuff like that, like, left me, like, speechless, like, utterly confused, utterly baffled in the movie theater. Um, anyway, Crackpot Theory is that the reason they don't show those, uh, major franchises that, is that there are potential films planned for those? Cat, uh, 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 series? Uh, question mark? The only reason that this came to me is just because it is, like, kind of a large omission if you consider the amount of references there are to the smaller Nintendo series, but not some of the bigger ones. Um, obviously you don't have Pokemon references, but that's because the Pokemon company is kind of a separate entity from Nintendo. Um, you could possibly say that there weren't Kirby references for the same reason, but I think Kirby and Kirby, they have a bit more leeway in terms of uh, where they can you put that as references. Um, for example, the Street Pass hats had Kirby hats, but not Pokemon hats. I don't know. That's what I think about that. Um, when they're in the Mushroom Kingdom, there's also, you know, references to things, but it's more obviously more Mario focused in that setting, which just makes it more expected. Uh, a few other musical things that I liked. I liked hearing uh, the Fury Bowser theme uh, played on the uh, as part of a rock band was playing that. I was like. They're really doing that song that was from a game that was like two years ago. I like that. Um, pretty surprising. Um, Bowser's musical number, I would say, is disappointing. It's really, it's really not a proper musical number. It was, it was a, it's more of a joke thing, um, which is fine. Um, they really played up the romance between Bowser and Peach, which was kind of surprising. But I guess you kind of have to, because otherwise. He doesn't really have a motivation for wanting to capture Peach. So they, so incorporating that sort of plot point from Mario Odyssey where he wants to have a marriage with Peach, that, that actually works very well um, for a film setting. Uh, post credit scenes, another version of that Peach song from Bowser as he's 
trapped in a cage. I like that they made him a miniature entity. That was fun. And then at the final scene, we have a little Yoshi egg cracking in the sewers of Brooklyn. So that does kind of hit that there's plans for uh, sequels or other films uh, with these characters, these versions of the characters with Yoshi appearing. Because his omission is pretty noticeable. There's one sequence where they're in a Yoshi jungle area, but it's just an extremely brief montage. Yeah, Yoshi's egg cracks and you hear the iconic Yoshi voice. It'll be interesting to see if Yoshi is actually a, a speaking character in the film or if he's just a animal sidekick. I'd kind of pre I'd prefer if he doesn't speak in full sentences. That would probably be weird. What other things do I have to say? Oh, I liked the, the Luma character. Uh, that was a good character. Um, that was, I think that, that character had the best jokes in the film. Um, you know, it's a good, it's a fun trope, the sort of child character who's like, has like existential horror as dialogue. That was, it works. It's a, it's a trope I've seen before. I can't think of any specific examples, but I've definitely seen that kind of thing before. And it just works. It's fun. Yeah, so there are a few side characters that work. Cranky Kong was okay. Uh, another weird musical reference was they just have the, the Mario Kart 8 menu music as uh, when they're making the, the Mario Karts. That was strange. Um, but like, it makes sense, but it's just like surprising to hear in a movie theater. Um, I didn't like that Gusty Garden's Galaxy was uh, only in the credits uh, montage where they show all the credits. Uh, I like that they use the traditional Mario font for the credits, but yeah, Gusty Garden Galaxy should have been probably in the film somewhere and not just in the credits. I think that was a poor choice. There are a fair amount of Nintendo credits at the credit section, of course. Um, so Toru Iwata got a credit, which was surprising. Credit is former Nintendo president, but it, it was nice to see a nod to Iwata's legacy in this film. I appreciate, I think that was, you know, not, necess not necessary probably, because I don't think the film entered production while he was in charge, but maybe, maybe it did, I don't know. But uh, either way, it was cool to see his name up there. Respect on that front. In terms of future films, uh, I don't really know where you go from here because they've covered the main Mario tropes. So from here, you kind of have to, there's, you know, there's, there's a, there's forks in the road now. So where do you go from here? Um, do you adapt another Mario game? Um, do you still have Bowser as the main villain or do you introduce other villains or do you just have Bowser be the main villain with the sub villains like the Koopalings or Bowser Jr.? I don't know. Many, many choices to be made. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Um, my hope is that for future films they manage to make the characters more fleshed out because it was just very weird that you can have a full-length movie but with characters that are just so, so underdeveloped. Um, it is really striking and unusual. Yeah, uh, I felt very authentic to the Mario games. You could definitely see the Nintendo influence in there. Um, for better or for worse, um, depending on your perspective. The illuminationness, the influence of that studio, felt minimal. It didn't feel like a traditional illumination film, which is good because it's not what I wanted. Um, I wanted a film that felt faithful to, those, to the Mario games. And this does in large part. It makes its own deviations, some of which are odd, but they do work. I liked seeing the Baby Mario and uh, the Baby Mario and Luigi designs looked like just straight out of the games, which is cool. There's also a Baby Peach appearance, but she looks slightly altered. But Baby Mario and Luigi just look exactly like they do in the games, which is funny. Yes, I liked seeing Mario and Luigi's family. That was fun. They have like a large Italian family that's appropriate. Uh, and. Uh, I like the van. I like that they go around in a van and that they spent all their money on a commercial. Uh, seeing the film, I think I would have expected a slightly more positive overall response from film critics um, just based on what this is um, and what it accomplishes. I really can only speak from my perspective as a fan of Nintendo, uh, so I don't really have the perspective of someone who doesn't have an intimate knowledge of uh, the games. Just from my perspective, it really did feel like a success and uh, many elements of this film do not work and are just weird but uh, as, a, as an overall experience it's just it's unique it's interesting it's entertaining parts of it are funny parts of it are slightly annoying uh, it's extremely visually and auditorily overwhelming um, 
So yeah, check it out. It's a weird one. I think one of the bigger takeaways from this is just the future potential of Nintendo films. I don't know wh what that would look like, but I think we have a better picture of the possible direction that uh, Nintendo could go into into feature films. You know, they have a little a little intro animation with Mario and Luigi running around um, before the movie. I liked that. Um, but yeah, there's definitely potential. And what I'm wondering is if Illumination is going to be the primary animation partner on those future projects, because I kind of suspect that they will, but the, the issue is I don't know how well their style would align with something like The Legend of Zelda or Metroid or Kirby. Uh, Kirby's probably the most obvious thing uh, in terms of tone that is comparable to this, but... Even then, it's actually quite a lot more complicated in terms of the lore and characters than uh, this movie was. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I think in the future, in future movies, I would like to see Bowser be a ally character. We've seen that in a lot of Mario RPGs, like uh, Super Mario RPG and uh, some Paper Mario games, and recently in uh, Sparks of Hope. So I think that would be good. Um, I think. You know, they made him very likable in this film, even though he's an antagonist. Um, I think they did balance that pretty well. Um, he feels true to Bowser. He's he's goofy, but uh, antagonistic works for me. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the best Mario stories are when Mario and Bowser have to work together. Um, also, Peach. Peach, obviously, is a companion in this film, or a traveling companion with Mario. They go on the journey together. For much of it, um, Mario does end up saving the day in the end um, by rescuing Luigi and the other Mushroom Kingdom residents and uh, Peach from Bowser's uh, Bowser trying to drown them in lava. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking because it's been a while. Uh, I might have future videos on this topic, the topic of Nintendo films and uh, this Mario film. But uh, yeah, a lot to say, a lot to analyze. Um, so yeah, that was fun. And uh, I'll, I'll catch you later. I have other videos planned. Wow, what a shock. But they will be cool, I assure you. Wow.